Hello tech world and welcome back to another video. As many of you know, the iPad mini 7 has recently become my go-to iPad thanks to its compact size, making it perfect for portability, watching content, jotting down notes, and more. Recently, I decided to install the iPad OS 26 public beta to explore its newest features and see whether it could take my already great experience with this iPad to the next level. In today's video, we'll dive into what's new with this update, how it's either improved or possibly worsened my daily use, and whether it's worth trying out right now. If you're new to the channel, here we cover all things tech and gaming, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now, let's jump right in. In terms of design, Apple has introduced a new liquid glass aesthetic, a complete visual overhaul that changes everything from your lock screen clock to your app icons, giving the interface a sleeker, more modern and glassy transparent look. At first, I thought it was pretty cool and interesting, and I spent a few days testing it out, but honestly, I ended up switching back to dark mode as it just made it easier for me to find apps quicker. Trust me, a little color can go a long way. While it's a nice feature to have, I think a lot of people will enjoy it at first, but quickly move on once the novelty wears off. At least, that's my opinion. If you want to try it out yourself, just hold down on your home screen, tap the edit button in the top left, select customize, and you'll see four design options for your apps. From there, choose the clear option to enable liquid glass, and let me know in the comments below, are you a fan of this new design, and do you plan on using it? Moving on, let's talk about what I think is the biggest feature in the iPad OS 26 public beta, which is the brand new windowing system. In my opinion, this is the update that truly elevates the iPad experience like never before. Apple has finally given users the freedom to manage app windows however they want, with the ability to resize them and arrange them to their liking. This is a feature iPad users have been asking for for years, something Mac users have enjoyed for ages and now it's finally here. You can even split your iPad screen into thirds or quarters, which is a really cool addition. This new window app mode has been a game changer completely transforming not only my productivity but also the way I use my iPad overall. Another nice touch is the inclusion of traffic light controls, just like on Mac OS. These let you close, minimize, and full screen windows seamlessly. And even in this beta version, they work flawlessly. For those who don't want to use the new windowed app mode, Apple has also brought Stage Manager to iPad OS 26. What's surprising is that it's no longer exclusive to M series iPads, as it now works on devices like the iPad Mini and even the base iPad. While Stage Manager is great, I personally think it's more effective on larger screens. That's why on my iPad mini 7, I stick to the window app mode, which feels far more natural for this size. One great thing about the new windowed apps is that when you close a window, the iPad automatically remembers the size it was when it closed. So if the app was in full screen, it will reopen in full screen. If the window was small, it will open back small as well. Another small but welcome change in iPad OS 26 public beta is the updated mouse cursor, now redesigned as a pointer. This is something I really wanted because the old circular cursor was often annoying to use. Thankfully, that's all in the past as we now finally have the cursor it should have been from the start, especially if you're like me and prefer using a mouse and keyboard with your iPad to write scripts. Now, let's talk about the menu bar, which has finally been added to the iPad. This new feature is designed to give users more control over their open apps, offering quick access to app functions and settings right at the top of the screen. However, to be honest, it's not as useful as I expected just yet, as many apps still aren't fully optimized to take advantage of the menu bar Bar, so its potential feels a little bit limited for now. That being said, I'm hopeful that as developers update their apps, this feature will become a much more powerful tool for multitasking and navigation. Now, let's talk about the Files app, which has also received a bunch of useful new features, as finding what you need is much faster now because you can add colors and customize your folders for easier organization. For example, I have two customized folders. My main red folder holds my final thumbnail drafts, while the orange folder contains rough drafts being able to tag folders and assign colors of your choice is a neat way to make the Files app more efficient and user-friendly, especially for iPad users looking to stay organized and productive. Another app added to iPad OS 26 public beta is the Preview app, which is a fantastic addition for iPad users. This powerful tool works great with your Apple Pencil, allowing you to open, edit, and mark up PDFs and images right on your device. Honestly, it makes you wonder why it took so long for Apple to bring this app to the iPad, since it feels like the perfect device 
device for it. Whether you're annotating documents or making quick edits to images, Preview makes these tasks simple and intuitive. Last but not least, Apple has also brought the phone app to the iPad, which is a great new addition. To use this feature, your iPhone needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your iPad to make and receive calls. I've tested it out myself and it worked flawlessly. I was able to hear the other person clearly with no issues at all. So, how has iPad OS 26 public beta been treating me? Honestly, it's been amazing so far. I haven't experienced any major issues. I find myself using my iPad mini 7 more than ever before, thanks to all the new features this update brings. It's made multitasking and getting work done for my YouTube channel much easier, especially with creating thumbnails and writing scripts. Right now, I'm using the iPad mini 7 connected to my monitor via USB-C to HDMI paired with a keyboard and mouse, and it's been a game changer for productivity. I'm planning to share an iPad mini desk setup video soon, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Overall, I've really enjoyed everything iPadOS 26 public beta has to offer, and I can't wait for the full release in September. If you're thinking about trying the public beta yourself, I can honestly say it feels smooth and reliable. I'm using it on my main iPad device, which hasn't slowed down at all. It runs very fluidly, so if you don't want to wait, it's definitely worth checking out. But if you're not in a rush, waiting for the official September release might be safer, especially if you rely on your iPad daily. As always, Tech World, it's been a blast, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.